friends, it's Sarah from Sweet Sense from the Dollhouse. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, welcome back. Today I am bringing you part two of my December empties. I have been forming a ridiculous amount of wax. Um, and literally this is probably going to be a few days early even. But this basket is overflowing and then some. Um, it is nice to be at home with friends over the holidays and enjoying an array of different fragrances. So stay tuned in January. I will give you the meltdown rundown on all of my um, Scentsy Seasonal Smellies, everything that I picked for that video. <clears throat> Needless to say, as always, my house smells fantastic. So I'm just going to show you some of the empties I've accomplished. Um, it's great when I empty them, but then I'm, I'm also bringing so much in at the same time. It's kind of out with the old and with the new. Anyhow, the first one is Sensational's Dazzling Sky. Uh, this one is available in both Canada as well as the U.S., I believe. I have no idea what the scent notes on this are whatever sky lanterns and amethyst sky smells like. Um, I'd say it's like a really creative, really light, light, light floral as well as a sweet musk to it. It is really nice for the price point, 348 in Canada. I do enjoy having this in my bathroom um, it performs very well in there, in a smaller room. I don't know that this would throw in a large room. Um, and it's not a definite repurchase for me, but it's nice. I, I did enjoy it. Um, so who knows? This might be a repurchase for me. You never know. The next one was Blackberry Cashmere. When I first melted this, it smelled fantastic. It threw in my house. I warmed this in a 25 watt mainstays bulb warmer. I have no idea, but like the first two times I melted it, it was outstanding. And then for the end of it, it was just kind of like wah, wah, wah. So again, I'm not sure if it's because it snowed and my furnace is running nonstop to keep the dollhouse warm. Perhaps it's the increase in temperature that is kind of suffocating some of my home fragrances. I'm not sure. Um, this is one that is only available in the US, but I did find it on sale at a Canadian Walmart for $1.88. So that was kind of a bummer because it's Blackberry Cider, which I love that fragrance on its own, but it also in the duo pack, it comes with cashmere vanilla. So who knows? It was nice to start, but then it kind of went downhill from there. <clears throat> so I think that's it for the Sensational's Wax. So now let's get into the vendor wax. So I needed to use the bag for this one. So I just have the tag left. <laughs> um, this is Vintage Chic Scents Axeman of New Orleans, which is her sweet pumpkin milkshake and whipped cream. Um, in my opinion, out of all of Kirby's sweet pumpkin scents, I love the sweet pumpkin, but this one was by far like, I don't know, just, it was sweet pumpkin and creamy, but didn't throw very well. I don't know. I'm, she was one of my favorite vendors just because her stuff is so unique, but it does not throw worth a damn in my space. Super unique, but also one of the most expensive vendors, one of the longest to cure, but then you also have to use it within a certain time frame because it goes crappy. Um, I don't know, like I have purchased, um, I did place a large order with her at, was it her Cookie Monster restock? or the one right before that, I haven't even gone down to the States to pick it up yet. And the more I melt out of my D stashes, the more I'm getting disappointed. And I'm literally going to tell my wax wife sooner than later to just de-stash my order and not even send it to Michigan because I'm, 
I'm essentially that disappointed with her wax. Um, which brings me to the next one. This was Margot's Ballerina Clouds, Grandma's Pearls, Jackie O. And this one was poured in January of this year, so it has had almost a full year to cure. And that was Marshmallow Coconut Cream Pie, Marshmallow Lavender Vanilla, Marshmallow Birthday Cake, Vanilla Bean Noel. Uh, it was just very little lavender and a whole bunch of vanilla marshmallow, basically. And it didn't throw unless I put it in a teeny tiny bedroom. It smelt amazing in my teenager's bedrooms, um, but they weren't into it. My older daughters were like, it's just too milky. So then I go and I find in my vintage chic sense drawer that I have this, which is Cheshire's Grin, Grandma's Pearls, Life is But a Dream, which is lavender birthday cake, cotton candy frosting, marshmallow, marshmallow, lavender vanilla, lavender vanilla, cotton candy frosting. And, and, and yeah, no, nah. <laughs> that's all I can say about that. This is going in my D stash pile. Uh, I just, I don't know how many times you can use the same scent over and over and over again before it just smells like a big blob of nothing. And that's how I feel right about now. I have heard that Kirby's lemon and coffee scents are to die for, and they do get a good throw, but... I don't know, each to their own, I suppose. I just, I don't understand what the fascination is with certain vendors. If they don't throw, what the hell's the point in getting them, you know? So this one was Bento Wax Companies. It was um, toasted, sorry, I'll let rip the label off. Toasted Marshmallow and Them Store Bought Cookies. I know the cookie scent in here is quite popular. The only reason I know that is because my wax wife from Portland, Oregon tends to buy that by the bag full. But I think the toasted marshmallow in it was, it just kind of drowned out the cookie bakery note. It didn't throw very well in my house. It's the only Bento's wax that I have ever had and it just didn't leave the best first impression. So I, I'm not intrigued enough to place an order, but if I got a couple more pieces in a D stash, I'd be all right. Like definitely you can't really judge a vendor based on one cent. So it was kind of a bummer. Um, the next one was uh, Sassy Girl Aromas Caramel Latte Marshmallow Noel Hazelnut Cream. I can't remember. I think this one I used for an episode of Wax Wars. Um, I believe it was crap. It didn't throw at all. Pretty sure it just smelled like stale coffee grinds, which is unfortunate and disappointing. Um, Julie makes an amazing latte blend called, oh, what is it? Sugar Cookie Latte? It's to die for. This one, on the other hand, was <clears throat> poop. Um, Rhonda sent me in my last multi vendor D stash a couple of these. This is Southbound Soap Company's Marshmallow Jam Cookies. This was the very first indie vendor I ever tried, and this is the very first scent I ever tried. So essentially, this was the key to the rabbit hole, and pff, I haven't come up for air ever since. I absolutely love this. If you're into vendor wax and haven't tried Southbound Soap Company, you don't know what you're missing. Super amazing, super authentic scents, great performers. Oh, this one's to die for. It's marshmallow cream, super sugar cookies, and sweet berry jam drizzled on top. Oh my word, so good. Um, the next one is a Canadian vendor, um, Make Sense Candles. Sherry does amazing work um, to any of my American subscribers. She's anybody, actually. She's currently closed for Christmas, but she will reopen after Christmas. She's fantastic. She's another vendor that just keeps it simple, and I'm really, I really, really, really find I'm appreciating that because, as I said before, these complex blends they're not even really blends when you 
stack the same scent into a fragrance overload, it just smells like blech. Certain vendors like Sherry just have an array, a ginormous scent selection of super simple things, or you can custom blend them. Her turnaround time is fantastic. Um, she only picks the best of the best fragrance oils. This will definitely be a repurchase for me, and I will definitely be a long-term customer of uh, Make Sense Candle Company, for sure. She's amazing. What else do we have down here? Oh, I almost lost this in my very first um, Super Tarts order. <clears throat> Super Tarts use packing peanuts, which oh makes me cringe. But anywho, um, when I went to recycle the box and reuse the packing peanuts, this little sample fell out, which I was just so excited about my very first Super Tarts order, my very first pre-bam bag order, whatever it was. I forgot that there would probably be a sample in there. An hilarious story. I Earlier that day, I was placing a Super Tarts order. And I had put data in and out of my cart probably about 40 times. Um, it's lavender cream, pear slices, and something else. And I kept taking it out because of the pear. I really don't like pear scents. I wish I had found this sample before I clicked send and placed that order because data is phenomenal. It is a top performer. Most of Brandy's scents are. They're amazing. This will definitely be a repurchase. And I was... Very thankful I found a sample from Super Tarts. That was awesome. Pleasant surprise. I should have looked for it in the beginning, but I was just so excited. Couldn't help it. So the next one was, <clears throat> um, again, I've used the bag. This was just a random act of kindness from my friend in Portland, Oregon. And it is Sassy Girl Aromas, Pumpkin Pecan Waffles, Marshmallow Fireside, uh, Cider Lane, and Blackberry, which I believe is that blend is called ghosts and goblins it happens to be on julie's website right now and i'm going to place an order for three bags of this it's like all of the classic my most favorite bath and body work scents put together with blackberry <gasps> oh it's to die for Rhonda just sent me like two little cubes out of a clamshell and oh i i literally i would buy this by the loaf I would buy it by a hundred bags at a time. It's to die for. Also, fantastic performer. But again, it was um, a random act of kindness, so it, it already had time to cure. Um, I'm not sure how long, because it was given to me or gifted to me rather. <clears throat> so next is Sensi, and I have a whole lot of that. As always, I'm not going to talk too much about this clothesline. You guys see this all the time. I use at least one or two of these a month in my laundry room. We have a main floor laundry room, and I'm typically not a clean scent fan. Um, and I'm trying. I'm trying multiple different vendors, trying to find a scent that lives up to this. And so far, nah. -uh clothesline is still my number one clean scent. I absolutely love this. Stay tuned because I did an episode of Wax Wars, or not Wax Wars, scent scores on clothesline. So that will be uploading probably in the next two weeks sometime. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's phenomenal. If you haven't tried this yet because you're thinking it's a boring laundry scent, order it like six of them tomorrow. You're going to want it. Uh, Snow Lay, um, I did a throwback Thursday on this, um, oh, you can see that in my playlist, I did, my heart is sad looking at this empty clamshell, but I did very much enjoy this, um, this is probably my favorite Scentsy holiday scent that I've ever tried so far, it is amazing, I think I said it in my, um, Oh, I just want to keep the clamshell and smell it. I think I said it in my throwback Thursday that Scentsy definitely broke the mold on boring traditional scents with this one. 
It is totally unique, like rock your socks, not at all what you're expecting from a Christmas scent, but it's beautiful. And I really hope to see this one and bring back my bar or even make it into next year's fall and winter catalog. Oh, cause it's deadly. I love it. I've actually even contemplated jumping on um, <clears throat> the Sensi D stash pages and seeing if there's any consultants out there with any left. Which brings me to the next one, White Sands, was this week's Throwback Thursday. I enjoyed the heck out of this one. Um, oh yeah, check out the Throwback Thursday playlist and you will see this one. I posted it actually today. Um, it is phenomenal. It's jasmine, coconut, and rice. If you're not into floral, don't stray away from this one because neither am I. It is not like a girly floral. It is just beautiful. It's a top performer. You can warm this in any room. Phenomenal. Um, <laughs> I know my regular subscribers are going to be like, shut up about that. I'm still warming autumn blaze maple. <laughs> I know, I know, oh, you guys are sick of hearing about it, but I have officially put the rest of my hoard at the very, very, very back of the back of the back of everything for next year. This, I'm not promising that this is the last claim shall you see till next year because I might, I might dip into it. Literally, I love this scent. I don't know if it's still available, oh, but I'm going to try it for the longest time. It's not on the website. But if you type it into the search engine of either your PWS or the workstation, it still comes up. It's it's hiding on there, especially for me, because since he knows Sarah's going to literally buy out the stock personally. It's amazing. Um, the next one was from A Random Act of Kindness, Sweet Plum Pastry. Um, I would typically be sad about this, but I have been spoiled rotten. I went from dying to try this, searching all over the place for it, and then I have had um, friend mail or random acts of kindness from um, people in the States as well as here in Canada send me sweet plum pastry. I think I have six bars now. Oh, so now that this one's empty, I'm down to five, but I love this. Like, I think Scentsy would make so many people happy if they brought this back in the spring. However, I've recently found out through my subscriber, Michael, that a whole bunch of things we are dying to get our hands on is still available. But guess where they are? In the UK. So my friend Michael and I are going to do a friend mail exchange and I'm super excited because he is sending me um, some Scentsy from the UK that we can't get here and vice versa. I'm going to hook him up with a bunch of North American Scentsy stuff. So I'm very much looking forward to doing a friend mail exchange with Scentsy consultant Michael from England. I'm so excited actually. The next one is Sensi's Bring Back My Bar Bubblegum. Um, I love this scent, and I know I shouldn't pick favorites, but I do like this one more than I like Bubblegum Blast. They are both authentic bubblegum scents, but this is like trading card bubblegum versus the other one is like Bazooka Joe bubblegum. <laughs> I know, people are like, Sarah, it's a kitty scent. That's disgusting. Who cares? But I love this one the best. Um... It's no longer available. I think it was in the flash sale recently. Um, but it's just a fun scent. I love this. Usually I warm this in the kids' bedrooms upstairs. I'm not going to lie, though. I have been guilty of warming it in my room as well as in the living room. <laughs> just because it's a fun scent. I like it. Um, the next one is December's Scarlet Woods. You know what? I really liked this on cold um I started to warm it and the first couple cubes is okay but the more I warmed it it started to smell like burnt rose petals to me and Rose and I aren't really friends so I had to pour it off and make it into samples instead because yeah it just on 
cold, even just smelling the clam, it smells like a really earthy, woodsy, unique winter scent. But when you add heat to it for some reason, I get like um, boiled rose petals, if that makes sense. I don't know where that comes from. Perhaps my nose is just weird, but that's what it smells like to me, and I'm not a big fan. The next one is Scentsy's Pretty and Plum. I know I've talked about this recently on my channel. I also did a scent scores on this. Um, I have. It's strange because I haven't found too many people that really like this scent. Most people are like, ew. <laughs> I love this. It does smell like a Crayola crayon on cold, but once it's warming, it is phenomenal. So when we have our 10% off sale, I fully intend on buying like 25 of these just in case it doesn't come back next year. Because understandably, Scentsy brings back best sellers. I wish Scentsy had the room to stock literally every single fragrance they ever made. But the ones that you see come back are the best sellers from the year before. So if you've fallen in love with the new release, be sure to shop that 10% sale in case your new love isn't a collective new love because if it doesn't sell, it doesn't come back. The best thing that you can do to make sure that your bar comes back is continually place purchases, support your fragrance so it doesn't disappear. Um, and then, especially at that 10% off sale, make sure that you take full advantage of that and hopefully see your bar repeated the following year. But, oh yeah, that is good. That is really good, I love that. So that will definitely be a repurchase for me. The next one is this month, or sorry, January's Scent of the Month Vanilla Mint. I did turn two of these clams into samples just because I know my customers are gonna love this. That's where I have a hard time. Like, um, I did some Scarlet Wood samples, but consultants out there, what do you think? Like, when you sample off a scent that you're not crazy about, I know it doesn't mean that other people wouldn't be crazy about it, but I also don't wanna give them one that smells bad. Do you know what I mean? So I'm always hesitant. I'm like, well, I don't wanna hand out samples that aren't the greatest. I wanna hand out stuff like vanilla mint, which I know customers are going to be like, Ooh, I need to order that. Right? So I did use two of these for samples, but I've been melting this all over the house. Grace thinks it smells like toothpaste or something that like the fluoride treatment at the dentist or something. I don't know. It's just so funny, but my oldest daughter Tatum and I love this. I, I think I've gone through one, two, three, four clams already. It is fantastic. So be sure to put this on your order come January 1st. It is amazing. And again, I literally cannot wait to see what John Sparks comes up with for that. Um, oh, hang on, we're almost at the end here. <clears throat> the next one is Sensi's new release, Glacial Ice. I cannot get enough of this scent. And as you can see, there's one cube left in it. This will be empty in about 20 minutes because I love this scent at bedtime. It's mistletoe and berries. I don't know that I get a lot of berries in it or just the beautiful blend of the mistletoe plus the berries. It is so soothing, so relaxing, oh, just amazing. I swear, I know people are gonna, like, it is a winter sun, but I think I would warm this year round at bedtime. I love it that much, it is phenomenal. So this will definitely be a repurchase and I will probably repurchase about 36 of them. Like this and Pretty and Plum and Quiet Grove Come our 10% off sale, I am going to go nutty on those three fragrances for sure. Probably a couple other ones before they disappear, but those three, absolutely. If you haven't tried those three, get on it. So last but not least, um, 
I have finally finished my Scentsy, my very first Laundry Love Bundle. Um, if you saw the first part, the review of this, I, it, my opinion still haven't changed. It's, it was not good. Um, this didn't clean my clothes. Um, I would have to rewash clothes multiple times. Um, so yeah, I, no, I, um, I use unscented laundry detergent. So I started using laundry detergent plus this. That way I knew my clothes would be clean. Um, still didn't pick up a fragrance from this. Recently I ran out of my unscented laundry detergent and I, I'm terrible for forgetting that there's wet clothes in the laundry. So I'll leave them there overnight. The next day you go and you know how it smells a little bit not good. So I run it again in a quick wash. That's what I used the rest of this in. I literally had about that much left and I used it in three different quick wash settings. Um, my clothes still didn't smell like clothesline. They just didn't smell like must anymore. Uh, this will definitely not be a repurchase. I don't think it cleans clothes and it's crazy expensive. Uh, same with the clothesline washer whips. Um, a great idea. Um, I have tried other washer whips. What was it? I have Luna as well as White Tea and Cactus. These make your laundry room smell phenomenal while you're doing laundry. But they don't make your clothes smell like this. I had several subscribers tell me that they work, but it has to be certain scents like black raspberry vanilla, or there was one other one, like super, super, super strong scents. Um, I love getting suggestions, but that's it's still, to me, it's way too expensive. And if those don't work, then I've spent an incredible amount of money. It's just I don't know. Even if it did work, realistically speaking, I don't know anyone who spends $66 on laundry products for 36 loads or whatever it is. Even if it's 42, I don't know anybody in their right mind that spends that much money on laundry detergent. Um, also, I don't really know what the ingredients in, our, in this are. Um, I don't know. This definitely wouldn't be a repurchase for me either. The only thing that I am somewhat intrigued by are these Scentsy dryer bars. And as you can see, the more you use them, the more like rough, tattered, nasty looking they get. Um, brand new, when I used them, I got eight loads out of them. So I could do eight, um, dry eight loads of clothes with them before they would lose their scent. They would still prevent static, but they lost their scent entirely after eight washes. So I believe it was Lisa Roberry's channel. She says, if you store them inside your washer whips, it promotes the fragrance and the longevity of your bars, of the dryer discs, sorry. So that's what I used this for because it didn't scent my clothes at all. So I just left like three quarters of it in there and store my dryer bars in there which worked phenomenally um, I like the idea of this I'm still going to do a part two of a laundry care follow-up just because I want to do a little bit more research these definitely the wash whips and the and the soap are just definitely a, a, a no-go for me but I love the idea of these I would like to know what these are made out of. Is this recycled material? Um, I would like to know more about this product because I love the idea versus, um, I know a lot of people still use dryer sheets, which are super toxic. I'm going to do a follow-up video and, and tell you probably about seven deadly reasons why you shouldn't use dryer sheets as well as they're horrible for the environment. They are polyester and something else, I believe, if my memory serves me correct. And if I use dryer sheets, I would say I do about 20 loads a week. And that's 20 dryer sheets that's polluting our environment. So I'm definitely going to do a follow-up on the Sensi dryer discs, if they are better for the environment, if they are less toxic for 
your family, um, because these are the only things that I potentially might repurchase. So that's it, folks. I apologize that my December spec part two video was so long, but I have been melting in a crazy amount of wax. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned. I have lots more scent scores coming up, as well as the follow-up on Scentsy Dryer Discs. I just have to do more research. Thanks for watching. Bye.